Hello, and thank you for joining us today. We wanted to continue our discussion on taking raw data and processing it in order to deploy and implement machine learning models. To start that whole process out, we need to start with our data sources. One of the main data sources in most large corporations for a lot of BI, data science, and research work is some form of a data warehouse. Now, many people probably have not heard of a data warehouse as it is not a commonly discussed subject in college and until most developers, data scientists, and data engineers start working at large corporations, they may or may not actually know what a data warehouse is. So let's talk a little bit about what it is. Uh, before we talk about what, I like to answer why. The reason being, the more you understand why, I think the clearer the reason of making a data warehouse and what a data warehouse is becomes clearer. So the main thing a data warehouse does is it centralizes and standardizes uh, all of the data from your company's various applications. These applications could be internal where they're very custom and your own company operates them, uh, or they could be third parties like Salesforce or Workday or QuickBooks. A lot of these modern third party applications have some sort of way of pulling data out and using it to analyze for other things. Generally, what we will do is we'll take something called an ETL, um, which essentially pulls out all that data, uh, extracts it, that's what the E is for. It performs some sort of limited business logic on it, that's the transformations part, and then loads it into the data warehouse, thus the L. This whole process also does something else, hopefully, which is you can start now connecting all of this data together. So you can start connecting your finance data to your web traffic data, to your sales data, et cetera. That's generally the goal of a data warehouse is to get all of your data from all of these different applications into one location. Now the question also kind of becomes, why are we duplicating the data, right? Like we're taking all this data that already exists often in databases already and putting it into another database essentially. So why, why go through all the trouble of duplicating the data? And one of the main reasons being that we are dealing with two different types of problems. Typical application databases deal with what we consider transactions. So this would be like inserting a row, like we have in the picture where it's inserting uh, Jade Smith uh, from Denver uh, for some sort of patient. Um, this is just an insertion, and so it's a single transaction. Also, other transactions could be updating this data. So maybe uh, Jade Smith moved, so we need to update their data. Or deleting it. Maybe Jade Smith is no longer a patient of ours, so we are deleting that data. So those are very specific transactions and those could happen honestly at a rate of millions at a time, right? Like you might be inserting, deleting, creating, updating, you know, depending on how often your application is used at a very rapid rate. And so those transactions need to happen unhindered because applications are live things that need to have, that have an end user that is trying to, you know, fill out a form or go through a process without being hindered. Because every time you're inserting this data, you're also running you know, thousands of, of analytical statements on that data at the same time. And so that's another thing. We also separate it because we try to avoid having both analytical and transaction processes happening at the same time because typically analytical processes, as we kind of see on the right side uh, with the sum, will hit many of your rows at one time, usually running some sort of aggregation or slicing and dicing of one form of another. So not only are you doing performing a different process, one being transaction, one being more aggregation, you're also trying to avoid running into each other with these processes. Uh, oftentimes a large analytical process, depending on the type of data warehouse that you're using, might actually block or lock a table. Uh, this also, again, depends on the, the data warehouse as a lot of modern ones are getting better to where you can start running multiple uh, long running queries in parallel. But because of the difference also in just general processes between you know, inserting data versus aggregating, you also end up needing different designs. So as mentioned in the last slide, one of the other reasons we build a data warehouse is to simplify uh, the overall design. Transaction, transactional databases benefit from being what we consider normalized. Uh, this often leads to tables being very far away because by limiting the amount of interactions each piece of data has and each entity has with another, it simplifies basically the updates and the inserts uh, and limits how many things can go wrong as well as just saves space and a couple of other benefits that we have uh, from an application standpoint. This makes it very easy to run from the standpoint of operations, but in terms of 
analytics where we have data scientists and data analysts who are trying to you know join and deal with all of this messy uh, application data uh, it is much simpler for them to have what we consider something more like a snowflake or star schema design where there's a central table like in this case we've got f orders uh, which stands for fact orders basically a fact table which we will discuss facts and dimensions later on uh, and then all of these other dimensions around there so like the d location the d person d product etc one way you can think about this is the facts tables are generally the transactions that occur whether it's website views or orders purchased or claims put in by a patient these are generally the values that happen and can get appended to and often have some sort of number associated with it like sales cost um, and things like that whereas dimensions tend to be more the values that you slice and dice by so for example maybe you want to figure out how much of a product you sold uh, and break it down by product category so you probably join to the product table uh, and group by uh, product category and some on the sales it's very simple to do whereas you know in the application database you'd have to join product to order item to orders and there's not you know and other possible tables uh, just to kind of get that product category and there are far more complex joins that you might have to do in an application database versus a data warehouse again it's just about trying to serve the need application databases serve operational sides and you know people who are and software engineers build them for that whereas data warehouses are built for analytical teams to easily understand the data and quickly join and build things like dashboards and analytics without having to fully understand all of the logic all right with all this said what is a data warehouse and kind of what is it used for so at the end of the day, a data warehouse is a central place for data. We talked about this uh, earlier on. It's just that central place where we take all of this data uh, from various HR systems, finance systems, sales systems, et cetera, and then we start creating insights from them. And, and that's a cliche term, yes, but there are a lot of different things we can do. For example, uh, in one corner you see here, you see develop and sell products. Now this might be an interesting thing. Some of you might be wondering right now, how in the world are you going to develop and sell products with data? And I have definitely worked with multiple companies that that's what they do. They take data, whether it be healthcare, transportation, et cetera, uh, and create products that they often sell to, you know, hospitals or companies that are looking for transportation advice, et cetera. And with that information, then the company can basically make better decisions. And honestly, there are some eight to nine figure companies out there that that's what they do. They basically just take data and sell it back uh, to people as analytics. Internally though, you can also do things like create standardized reports and dashboards. So this is often where you see things like Tableau. Uh, you can, with that comes KPIs and metrics tracking, as well as a lot of research into cost saving opportunities and just so many other things that data warehouses allow you to do because you suddenly can connect HR data to sales for sales data, which perhaps that wasn't possible before. Or connect things like accounting to, you know, your CRM. And that's the main thing data warehouses are built for is to help answer questions. So it's a central place to get data so that your company can answer questions. All right, but are there drawbacks to a data warehouse? I mean, it, do they only provide benefits? And the answer is, of course, there are drawbacks to data warehouses. Uh, they take lots of people, lots of time, they have lots of maintenance, which just in the end equals lots of money. Uh, that companies have to spend building, maintaining, updating, uh, improving uh, data warehouses. Companies spend probably millions of dollars a year just, ma just migrating uh, a data warehouse from probably an older technology into the newer ones. And it does take a lot of special expertise in with people that know SQL and, and automation and uh, ETLs and a lot of very complex concepts uh, in order to build these systems. However, they continue to be built and provide a lot of value for a lot of companies. So at the end of the day, the question is, why do we build data warehouses? So at the end of the day, it kind of goes back to this picture, right? We want to answer questions. We want to know, you know, how much we're selling in different regions of the country. We want to know uh, which types of employees are leaving our company faster than other types of employees. We want to know, on average, how much is our company spending in different accounting areas? 
all of these little questions can come up and even more specific questions and maybe where you start actually going across uh, departments start to come up and you need to be able to answer these. So that's why we built these because having information means your company can make good decisions. So with that, I just wanna say thank you. This was kind of the first intro to data warehouses. We'll be going a little more in depth in our next video where we'll start talking about different pieces of data warehouses. Again, we'll talk about facts and dimension tables as well as kind of just some other uh, points here and there. I do wanna add that data warehouses um, aren't the only option of data storage system these days. Well, again, we'll talk about some of the other uh, ways that people store data uh, to analyze. This is just one that people store data today. Thanks so much and I will see you next time. Bye.